All right, what's going on, guys? I'm going to try to knock this video out. A lot of people has been re requesting this video. All right, Triple G against our Canelo breakdown, okay? Um, now, going into this fight, a lot of people are unsure where they're going with this one. Um, a lot of people now has jumped ship and believe that Canelo has a good chance of winning this fight. And I think he can win this fight, all right? But the reasons why most people think Canelo is going to win this fight is because of their performances recently, okay? Uh, Triple G has fought Kell Brook, and he's fought Daniel Jacobs, too. You can make the argument those are the two best fighters he's fought, okay? And a lot of people either thought that you know, when it came against, uh, the fight came against Kell Brook, leading up to that fight, a lot of people thought that Kell Brook was the most skilled fighter that Triple G has faced. Even though he was a welterweight, a lot of people thought that Kell Brook was the most skilled, the most talented. And I agree. I, I think I agree to that. But the skill to, uh, let me say, weight ratio plays a factor. No matter how skillful you are, it plays a factor. This is part of the reason why I I didn't think it was a good idea for Floyd to fight Triple G, you know, when people were talking about it a few years back, a couple years back. They didn't think it was a good idea, even though Floyd is is it's is is uh is is a, a very skillful fighter. I think there's gonna be a point where you just can't beat a guy because even though you might have more overall talent than a fighter, I think size is gonna play a factor at a certain point. And I think it played a factor in the uh, Kell Brook fight. Kell Brook was doing very, very well. Um, he has the skills to compete with Triple G for a little bit. <laughs> that was it, you know, because Triple G at the end of the day is still the bigger guy. And his style was all wrong for Kell Brook because he's going to bring that pressure. And we know that Kell Brook has struggled against fighters that brought that pressure. We saw what happened with Errol Spence in the very next fight, right? Um, but anyway, you have that fight, and then you have the Daniel Jacobs fight, which a lot of people thought that the fight was off by, you know, whether, whether you thought that, I don't know, uh, Triple G won the fight, or you thought that Daniel Jacobs won the fight. Most people thought it was close. Whichever way you went with it, you know, people that thought Triple G won because of his jab, um, you know, they just thought the knockdown and they thought that he won more rounds, okay, got more points. There's people that thought Daniel Jacobs won the fight, you know. Um, I think a lot of it, you know, a lot of people weren't, weren't expecting Jacobs to do that well. You know, I'm not trying to take anything away from Jacobs' skill set because I am a big fan and I've been following him for years, for years, for a long time now. Big fan of Daniel Jacobs. But I just didn't think he was that good, you know, because he's never proven it to me. He's never fought a guy on that level and looked that good against him. You know, I think the best fighter that he fought was a guy that he lost to against uh, Perot years ago, you know. Uh, but he's improved since then, okay. But it's unfair for Triple G because a lot of people are criticizing his last two opponents some people think he's overrated some people think he's getting old and age is playing his factor okay but if you're going to compare triple g and his last two performances you have to bring up you have to factor in that canelo has been fighting guys that he's supposed to beat. okay he's supposed to beat liam smith he was supposed to beat chavez jr okay he was supposed to beat uh it, it, Amir Khan, okay? I know some people say that Khan was a better boxer and leading up to that fight, Khan was winning the fight and everything like that. That's cool. But every fighter that Khan lost to, okay, they figured him out. What he does is great. It's exciting. You know, he's very fast. He has long arms. You know, the volume is up. Great combinations. But a lot of these guys figure him out at some point. Even Maidana back then figured him out at some point. And this was before Maidana started training with Robert Garcia. You know, these fighters figure him out. What he does is it becomes repetitive at some point in that fight. This is why Danny, Gar Danny Garcia timed him. And I said and I predicted that 
Canelo Alvarez was going to do the same thing. Canelo was going to be losing at first, but he was going to catch Khan and put him to sleep. And that's exactly what happened. Okay? That's a fight that I expected Canelo to win. Okay? James Kirkland, another fighter. And the only fighter, the closest fighter that Canelo has fought over the years that would prepare him for this fight. And I think James Kirkland is only a fraction as good as Triple G. Because he's the only fighter that actually literally brought the fight and put on a lot of pressure and volume on Canelo. He's the only fighter to do it. Every other fighter either tried to outbox him or they try to out pressure him and they just, you know, they were extremely unsuccessful with it. You know, I don't know what Chavez Jr.'s plan was. You know, um, I know Angulo years ago um, tried to do the same thing, but, you know, he, he, Angulo's been shot since the Lara fight. Let's be honest. You know, he's, he was, that, that was his last good uh, performance, and he got badly injured in that fight. And I don't think he's been the same since that fight. But you had Kirkland, who brought the fight to Canelo. But the problem is with Kirkland is that he's nowhere near as good as Triple G. You know, he's nowhere near. He's not nowhere near as durable. Okay, he doesn't hit as hard. Okay, he's not as skillful. He's not, he's not as good defensively. You know, he's none of those things. You know, so it's easy. It's very, very easy to compare. Um... And say compare component uh, compare opponents, and look at their names and say, well, Canelo has fought the better fighters. Yeah, on paper he has, but he hasn't fought the the middleweights. You know, he's beating he's beaten guys that on paper historically are better, like Cotto. But we all know if Cotto got in there with Triple G, most likely Triple G would have stopped Cotto. All right, and Canelo didn't. Even, Canelo wasn't even able to drop him. Even with those clean, hard shots he landed against Cotto. Cotto has been down. Cotto has been stopped before. Okay? Cotto has been beaten up. Even Joshua Clotty gave Cotto a, better, a worse beating than Canelo Alvarez did. And I think people are, are forgetting all of these factors. You have to... You have to think about all of these. When, you, when you're comparing these fighters and you're saying, well, Triple G didn't look good against James Kirkland. I mean, I'm not sorry, James Kirkland, Daniel Jacobs. Just look at Daniel Jacobs real quick. That night, if Canelo had fought Daniel Jacobs that night, what do you think the outcome of that fight would have been? Do you think Canelo would have done better than Triple G did that night? Do you think that? Do you believe so? Remember, Daniel Jacobs took some hard, hard shots from Triple G directly throughout the whole fight, all right? And he went down one time, but he recovered. Really, it's not like one of those, he didn't get up wobbling all over the place. No, he took the shot well and got right back up, you know? Do you think Triple G, do you think Canelo hits harder than Triple G? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. There's a lot of fighters that... That's going there and for Canelo that Canelo did not stop. You know, there's a lot of guys in there that he did not stop. You know, for, for the for the beating he was giving Chavez Jr., he didn't stop him. He didn't stop Cotto. He didn't drop Cotto. You know, I can go down a list. You know, he didn't stop Laura. He didn't stop Trout. You know, you got to factor all of these in. It's un, It's very unfair to compare. You know, now, I'm not saying Canelo can't win this fight, okay? I know I'm looking at Canelo. I've seen the the, the mass and muscle that he's, he's, you know, I've said, I remember I made a year, I made, I made a video years ago that I said, I think Canelo would be a great middleweight because I think he's finally fighting at the division he belongs at, okay? He's not, he doesn't have to worry about draining himself, okay? Um, he's fighting guys that are around his size, all right? And now he's not, he doesn't have to force himself to lose so much weight, you know? I think the draining issue is part of the reason why he would get so tired, you know, midway through the fight. You know, this is why he would take these breaks, you know? But at the same time, 
This is this is going to be his biggest flaw. He hasn't fought anyone to prepare him for this fight. There's no one there. Everybody he's fought fought at his pace. Okay, yeah, flu. I mean, Laura he had to chase. Laura he had to chase. But as far as the pressure, he's he hasn't fought anyone that brought the pressure his way. Okay, and when he did, usually. When Canelo was against the ropes, it was because he put himself there, okay, because he was setting traps. He's never been on the ropes where it was to a point where a guy forced him against the ropes and kept them there, okay? James Kirkland was the only one successful at doing that. He was the only one recently that was successful in doing that, and he did it, and he and he's not on Triple G's level. Whether you put... Uh, uh, and Wolf in, uh, in the equation or not. James Kirkland is just not on that level with Triple G. Triple G is going to have you against the ropes, but he's not going to be smothering himself, okay? He's going to be mid-range, all right? Throw into your body to open up your top for the, for he can take off your head. That's what he's going to be doing, okay? And when Canelo gets gas, and when Canelo, there, there's periods when he wants to take breaks, which he's used to doing in every fight, He's not gonna have he's not gonna be allowed to. Because he's fighting a guy that's going to be in his face all of the time. Throwing jabs. Okay. He's gonna be fighting a guy. There's no one he's faced in his resume that has prepared him for this fight. Now, even if you think Canelo is better than Daniel Jacobs, if you think he's better than Kel Brook, that's cool. But how much better? How much better is he really? How much? How much? Even if you think so. How much? You know, because I know people are going to get here and say, oh, well, Triple G hasn't fought anyone like Canelo. Really? Because from what I've seen, I mean, even if you think Canelo's better than Kell Brook, I don't think he's that much better. You know? Even if you think that. All right? And at least with Kell Brook, he has... Great feet. He has great feet. He knows how to get himself away. He's used to fighting guys that's trying to pressure him. He's used to that. So he was able to deal with Triple G a little bit longer, you know, than the average guy coming up from welterweight would, you know. But going back to what I was saying, even if you Canelo's better than those guys, how much better is he? I don't think he's better than Daniel Jacobs. I don't think he would have beaten Daniel Jacobs that night. Daniel Jacobs was way too versatile that night. Way too. I mean, just for him, the fact that, you know, from the outside, he had a great job himself. I mean, Triple G jab, we already know. Triple G usually wins the jab war. But Daniel Jacobs had a great job himself. And for the fact that he kept switching from righty to lefty throughout the night, Mainly fighting lefty, mainly, mainly having more success left lefty. Do you think Canelo would have been able to deal with that all night? Okay, especially if, because I believe that Daniel Jacobs probably has might even have more punching power than Triple G. He might, he might. You know, this is why Triple G respected him so much in that fight. You know. Regardless of who you think won, there was a different level of pressure. Triple G was smart with it. He fought him like the way he fought Lemieux, but he had more success against Lemieux because Lemieux is just not as skilled, nowhere near as skilled as Daniel Jacobs. He has a lot of punching power, but he's not nearly as skilled as a Jacobs, you know. Um, I think you got to factor all of this in, you know, and... You know, in my opinion, I think what Canelo needs to do, and I think he will do, I think early on he's going to do well, okay? I think early on he needs to jump in there and gain that same respect from Triple G that Daniel Jacobs um, forced, all right? It took G Triple G real quick to realize that he wasn't dealing with Kell Brook and he can't just walk down Daniel Jacobs because he could end up getting hit with a shot that's going to hurt him. I think those shots that Daniel Jacobs was landing was really hurting Triple G, okay? Yeah, he might have not been all wobbled and everything, but Golovkin didn't want to get hit by him. 
you know, we've seen other guys that Golovkin didn't care to get hit by. He didn't care for Kell Brook. He didn't respect Kell Brook. All right. He knew he was fighting in welterweight, and he knew that he had to take this guy out. And as you can see, like recently in the Mayweather McConnor Conor McGregor fight, you walk guys down, you're more likely to get hit more. It is what it is. But Triple G is going to bring on the pressure, but it's going to be smart pressure. You know, I think Canelo needs to demand his respect very, very early. Okay. Keep Triple G out. Keep triple keep triple G away. Try to make this fight go as late as possible. Go to the decision. I think I think Canelo's best chance of winning this fight is by decision. If he's gonna go in there and try to literally knock out Triple G, I think he's gonna be highly success unsuccessful. I think he's gonna burn himself out, and I think he's gonna get knocked out himself. Okay? I need him to be aggressive, but he has to be smart about it too okay uh if he's just gonna go in there and try to go to war and try to trade with triple g he's gonna get knocked out it is what it is i think canelo as hard as he hits um uh, i think his power is a little bit overrated a little bit a little bit um uh, and i think triple g is used to fighting big bigger punchers okay he's been fighting bigger punchers and bigger fighters throughout his career okay um, but Canelo needs to gain his respect early because Triple G can't come out starting out blazing. If Triple G's starting out blazing and he's winning rounds, round after round consecutively in the first six rounds, that's bad for Canelo because Canelo is going to tire out. I don't care what kind of shape he's in right now. He's not used to fighting guys like this. He's not used to it. He's going to tire out. He's tired out against Trout, Austin Trout. Won the second half of that fight. Austin Trout won the second half of the fight. Without a doubt. You know, I think Canelo won, but it was because of the knockdown. Trout won the second half of that fight. It's because Canelo is gas. And I know that was years ago, and we can say he's changed, and I, I think he's going to be a better fighter at middleweight. This is all of the things I said earlier in this video. But he's not used to fighting someone that's going to bring that kind of pressure and that kind of volume too and be smart with it because canelo is used to coming fight guy fighting guys that's coming in a straight line where he can set up his traps and do whatever he can just have his way with him you know he's always the ring general fighting these guys liam smith and, and chavez jr you know he's always fighting these kind of guys you know uh james kirkland you know these guys are doing it canelo i mean Cotto gave him some issues you know Khan gave him some issues but these are guys that he was supposed to be, you know, maybe not Cotto, not Cotto, you know, not Cotto. You know, I'm, I'm sure I don't remember what I I, I believe Canelo was still the favorite to win that fight. But, uh, you know, I, he's not even Cotto. Cotto is trying to outbox him. OK. Cotto was trying to outbox him. So was Khan. But most of these guys that Canelo's used to facing, they're coming straight in a straight line, coming right at him, all right? And he can just set traps and, and do whatever he wants to do. He's not going to be able to do it this time. Triple G, his jab, it's that simple. The same thing that we, every single Triple G prediction is the same thing, his jab, all right? Open up that body. Open up that body, go to his body. Both need to go to the body because I feel like not enough opponents of Triple G's have gone to his body. They haven't gone to it. But Triple G, he smothers you so much that you have no time to go to the body because you're leaving your top open. You know? I mean, Triple G is going to go for that. But not enough of these guys find a way to get to his body. Canelo needs to in this fight. If he's going to set himself in trap and put himself against the rope, if he's going to play that game, which is a very dangerous game, a very risky game, fighting with Triple G, because Triple G wants to have you against the ropes. If he's going to play that game, he needs to go to Triple G's body. He has to. He has to slow him down because no one ever does it. We've seen it recently with Ward and uh, Kovalev. It worked. 
he has to go to Triple G's body. Because if he, you know, if he tries to, you know, sit here and counter him all day and, uh, you know, outbox him from the outside, he's not going to do it. He doesn't have the volume. He likes to take breaks in in, in mid rounds. And, it, and, and you know, I, and I know I, I keep repeating a lot of things here, but I'm really stressing that this guy is not used to fighting. And I think that's Canelo's biggest flaw. He is not used to fighting guys on this level that that is that good that's bringing the pressure. So what is he going to do? We're going to see. How good is Canelo? How good is he? We're going to see it now. Um, I think Triple G is going to win this fight. Uh, you know, I try to think whether or not if I think Triple G can knock out Canelo. I just... I just can't picture Canelo being knocked out for some reason. I, I just can't picture. I think that would be crazy if Canelo gets stopped. I think that would be insane if Canelo gets stopped. I can't picture him stopping Canelo for some reason. But I think Triple G is very, very capable of doing it. And if he does do it, I see it happening in the late, late rounds. 10th, maybe 11th rounds. I mean, very late. Anywhere, anywhere in between the ninth and the end of the fight. If there is a stoppage. But I have Triple G winning. You know, I, I was stuck for a second because Canelo has looked so good. Um, Canelo looks to be in great shape. He looks super muscular now. He looks like the Hulk now. But even with all that being said, I still think he's going to gas out. You know, I do think he, he he's going to win. I think if it, if it goes to the decision, um, I think he has a, a good chance of winning on the cards. But I think I think Triple G got him on this. You know, I think I'm gonna go with Triple G by uh decision, uh possible late stoppage, um, late, late stoppage. I got Triple G on this. I don't I don't think Canelo can do it. I think Canelo has looked great because of the the opposition he's facing. Um I think a lot of the opponents he's facing, he's faced over the years were were very, very calculated. And I believe it will show in this fight. Okay. Um, and I think the only reason why Golden Boy and Oscar decided to make this fight is because of Triple G's last two uh, performances. Okay, a lot of they've been somewhat questionable. Okay, to the public eye, I don't believe so. I think he just fought really good fighters. You know, I think Kell Brook, he went in there was fighting overly aggressive and he got caught with a lot of shots. And I think uh, Danny Jacobs was just better than what we all expected, especially because of the size. And the fact that he didn't uh, do the same day weigh in that night. I think a lot of that, you got to factor a lot of that in. And um, he fought at the best Danny Jacobs we've ever seen. You know, I can't say the same with Canelo. I'm not impressed by the people he's beaten he, in, in a while. I haven't been impressed by a Dan, uh, Canelo performance in a very long time. And even the Cotto fight, um, even though I I wanted Cotto to win, um. You know, still with that fight, I, I thought that size did play a factor factor in that fight. Anyway, that's my uh, breakdown of the fight. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, Triple G by late stoppage. All right, go. I'm gonna go with that. All right, peace.